I hate the beach. Always have. Sand is disgusting. You know what? I'll tell you. That's... Oh. Sand is disgusting. You know what? I think I'd be more comfortable if people mowed the beach, like mowing a lawn. What? You can do whatever you want to sand. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today I'm going to show you a browser extension that will help you manage Intune with the Microsoft Graph. Um, I've been asleep on this, and maybe you have too. So let's get into it. Do you go to the beach? Okay, then don't judge me. Okay, um, so I want to talk about the Graph X-Ray and what it is. It's a it's an independent app um, made by some incredible folks here. Um, essentially, what this does is this allows you to poke around your Azure environment. So Entra, Intune, or Azure AD and Intune, still call it that, and um, it will transcribe uh, PowerShell or any language you'd, li you'd like. And this is super helpful when we're trying to automate something that we do and we're not sure how, or, or maybe we're not super familiar with graph commands. Uh, this is the best way to do that. Um, so it's kind of hard to talk about. I'm showing you the site here, graphxray.merrill.net. I'm gonna put this link below, so definitely check it out. It comes in three forms. It comes in a Chrome extension, an Edge add-on, same thing and a, a Windows desktop app. Um, uh, we're gonna do the Chrome extension um, just because uh, I already set it up an Edge and I feel like more people use Chrome. So I'd like to show you um, how do we start from scratch here. So first things first, how do we install it? Let's go to extensions, Chrome, and we're gonna look for graph, X-ray, and there it is. So we're just gonna hit add to Chrome Add extension, super simple, right? Not a whole lot to do there. That's it, it's in there. All right, now we're gonna log into, let's go to Android.microsoft.com. I'm signed in, my tenant, um, and let's turn it on. If you're not familiar with the graph, I'm going to put a link below. I did three videos on it, like last year, a long time ago, but at least it'll, Get you started i've been meaning to redo them but yeah what are you, what are you gonna do um so yeah if you're not familiar with microsoft graphs start there and don't go any further no you can do what you want okay so how do we activate that extension because we can see it here but not really doing anything so we're gonna click on the ellipsis the three dots it's like a vertical ellipsis um the menu icon you're gonna go to more tools and developer tools um Next to, on the right here, there's these two arrows. In Edge, it looks like a plus. Basically, it means more tabs. Uh, we have Graph X-Ray now. So we're gonna click there. And you can select what language you would like it to transcribe for you. Um, you know, I kind of think of this, uh, I'm saying transcribe, I'm thinking about like music, when someone like plays an instrument and someone else can write the notes that they're playing down. That's exactly what this is. So PowerShell. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to get all our users. So I'm gonna click on users, all users. Now see, by clicking that on the back end, the Graph API has to do something to show me this information. And every step it does is being documented here on the right. So, I mean, look at everything here. It's returning all this information. It's literally returning every user here. Um, now, if I wanna specifically select a user, uh, let me search for somebody and let me search for a user with Rick in their name. Okay. And I'm going to click on Rick Jones. And this is everything coming back from Rick here. Okay. So what I want to do so far is I want to hit save script. And we're going to open this with uh, Visual Studio Code. I just want to show you what's happening here. So right from the beginning, it's it's basically writing the scripts I would need to do this myself. So it's importing the module Microsoft Graph Identity. Um, it's getting the tenant type. Okay, it's getting my uh, subscription SKUs. Just a bunch of things in the background. Some of these won't pertain necessarily to what I need with making certain calls, but check this out. So right here, oh, we don't need you, go away. 
the get user is going to show me all users here. Now, when I typed in that search and hit enter, it made a query. So search display name Rick or mail Rick or user principal name Rick or given name Rick. So it's basically just looking everything that has Rick in it, right? And then finally, once I clicked on it, we get this user ID variable. Now it's not going to reveal it here. Um, but if we go back to uh, Chrome, we can see what actually happened. I'm going to scroll down here um, where it actually searched for Rick. It was here. And when I clicked on Rick, it gave us his, uh, we should have the ID. Yeah. So see, now we have this, um, this ID. So you see when we actually clicked on it, it's now calling the whole, the whole thing. So seven ED. And if we look up at the top in the URL here, that's where you can see objects seven E D. Yeah. So that's it right there. So now we have a PowerShell script to get a user without actually going into the graph here. All right, so let's say we want to give Rick a role. We're going to hit all users and that's, this is going to give us everything to return all users. Okay. We're going to click on Rick. We're going to go to assigned roles. We're going to add an assignment. We're going to give Rick the attribute assignment reader role. And now we're going to scroll down here, role management. So we were able to post the role assignments and then they come back when we get them. And that's what this is down here. So you can see where we actually posted it. So really interesting to see everything you click in Azure do something. And I'm going to take a detour to Intune and I want to take a look at what this does. So Intune.Microsoft.com, same thing, right? So here we go. We are going to, oh, cause the new page, we got to do this again. That's okay. It's practice more tools, developer tools. Okay. The arrows graph X-ray. So if I wanted to see all my, let's say configuration profiles, I'll go to devices. And of course, clicking devices calls all this. It's kind of crazy when you think about every click in Intune, um, makes all these calls, right? I also, I want to take this opportunity to distinguish between what we've been copying in PowerShell versus what this is. So this is just the REST API method, get endpoint. Down here is the PowerShell translation. So you would need a module to install this and, and use it, right? So the, the, the endpoints are more universal. And to be honest, they're, they're probably more helpful um, when we start piecing stuff together because they're kind of masked in these modules. Um, so I'm going to click on windows and configuration profiles. Okay. And that's going to give me all my configuration profiles. So access profile top 100. That's what this get just did. But if I'm going to create one new policy, windows 10 templates, let's do an identity protection profile. Create. We're going to call it graph identity test policy. We're not actually going to do anything with it. We're going to disable that and hit that to the, uh, leave that on not configured. Now let's enable and pin length seven, maximum pin length 20, lowercase allowed. Allowed special pin allowed pin expiration. Let's do 30. I'm just going to pick something with a lot of parameters. Enable, 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 enable. Okay. So now we have this policy. I'm not going to sign it. I'm just going to create it. And we're going to see that call down here. Now this is really interesting. So I'm I am going to download this. Okay. So let's take a look at this. So this is where we can see going into Intune right? Device management is the Intune known, Intune node. Um, this is basically pulling up all the windows devices. Get rid of that. Okay. Device management. Now down here, when we import the module, uh, it imports for policy configuration. So we're actually going to invoke, <coughs> I 
the new configurations. Take a look at these parameters it posted. These were all the parameters of policy we made. Uh, this, these are in the, um, it's like a JSON type format. That's what it should be anyway. Um, so these are the parameters, right? So you can see there's no ID because it's being skewed up. doesn't have an ID yet. Um, at the end it does, it gets issued one. That's what that configuration ID is. No assignments. Okay. But yeah, that's, that's our policy. False, allowed, allowed. Um, it didn't reveal our integers. I wonder if that's just a translation issue. So that's interesting. Um, but yeah, we now have a framework here if we wanted to use PowerShell to automate a new policy. Okay, why does this matter? Um, well, it depends. I'm a firm believer that every Microsoft 365 admin should have some knowledge of the Microsoft Graph API. Um, it basically takes your skill set from being able to do what's put in front of you by these tools in the console to uh, molding your own solutions and kind of going around what's just out of the box. And um, sometimes there's a gap between once we start learning about the REST APIs, what we know about the language we write in for, in my example, PowerShell, and then how they're connected to what we click around in Intune every day and what it means to, to uh, write these pieces. So for me, um, when I think about getting started with coding in the graph, this is a great way to start making correlations between uh, the Intune console, um, the REST API calls, and how they translate to PowerShell. So hopefully you found this helpful. I'd like to do more graph stuff in the future. And if there's anything else you want to see, let me know um, right here. That should have been Discord. I tried. One, two.